Hey, Albert, how you doing, man? Hey, man, Arca. How you doing, brother? Yeah, I'm good. What about you? I'm uh, pretty excellent now that we get the interview finally. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, nice. yes, um, before we actually get into this interview, I noticed one of your posts a few days ago, and I'd like, and I'd like for you to uh, spread some more light on this, your... Dis your distinguished gentleman dried thing. Your your supporting prostate cancer. Yeah, I really got into it like last year uh, when I got my first bag. It's a Kaffir Racer, one fifty cc, and I, I just love it since then. And since uh, there's this event in twenty eighteen that's uh, themed for, I can say it's a bike show or bike ride for. For uh, enthusiasts, uh, it's, it's like a, a, a bike ride with with all the participants wearing all these classic uh, dapper suits. Yeah. Yeah. Classic suits. But, um, and uh, you said the proceeds go to. For, yeah, the... for last year, they they were they had these beneficiaries for you know, uh, for cancer survivors, cancer patients. For our prostate, prostate cancer and mental, and mental, yeah. mental health, yeah, they were um, they were promoting men's health. Yeah, I see that. I'm I'm gonna donate as soon as I can, but I wanted well, to you. leave this in the description of this interview so that other people can support this because I I see your post. I mean, I've got thousands of people on Facebook, but I uh, yeah. saw your post and I was like, yeah. I need to bring that up in the interview because that's a I I I like that. It's important. But yeah, um, thank you for the support for, for the bike uh, bike. Um, motorcycle community and the uh, cancer patients. Yeah, yeah, I don't ride a motorcycle, but I ride a 1987 Honda Elite 50S moped. It goes up to about 35, 40 miles per hour. I can't oh, really convert good. that that's to that's kilometers, good. but <laughs> it, it, it's it's a it's a good bike, not bad. Yeah, it gets me I dressed down. I said it could take you places. Oh yeah, it, it it's a for 33 years old, it kicks some ass. <laughs> <laughs> And I, uh, I remember when I first started riding it, I, um, I had never ridden one before, and it took me a while to get used to. But yeah, I zoom across town on it. It's, it's my baby, and I'm sad. I'm yeah, gonna leave. Yeah, and, and 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 just make sure to wear the proper like gear and safety stuff. Yeah, I, I, I don't wear. save your life. Don't wear. I don't really wear a helmet, but I do wear eye goggles. Though. No, <laughs> you really have to wear one, even I if know. you're riding like thirty to forty miles, kilometers yeah. per hour. I know I'm I'm guilty as charged. <laughs> yeah, safety's number one. But um, so onto the interview itself. So I know you from Bad Omen, and you said you entered the band in the God Is Everywhere era, 2008. No, uh, it was the first recording. But I've been with Bad Omen since like uh, early 2000s, I guess. Oh wow. Yes. So it it took us a while to record. Because, um, I have, I, just to give you a background about me, I, I've been in the band since uh, 93. I've been, I've, been, I've been playing, jumping into bands, in between bands. I know you and, in the uh, and, 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 and in 2000, or I guess, or 19, I, guess, I think it's 2000, when John asked me to join the band as lead guitarist, yes. I, I wasn't. I wasn't the singer yet. I, I was in my own band as lead guitarist and singer, and then he asked me to join. And they played a couple of shows, uh, and it took us like eight years to before we finished. And we've been recording since the early two thousands up until two thousand eight. Wow. We just completely. It's it's a it's a it's been a long process. We've we've been jumping in the studios, and doing the record. And we had to to scrap some songs along the way. That's why it took us a long time. Yeah, I I noticed that it goes up uh, Black Cat, I think ninety four, ninety five, then sell out and they're back, which I finally heard they're back. I actually bought it as a bootleg off Discogs, which uh apparently there's a middle finger USA that John had no yeah. clue about. I showed him that and he's like, Oh, what the fuck? It's been there a long time. It's been there a long time. Yeah, but I finally heard their back, and what I've noticed, which I know you aren't the vocalist on Black Cat, Sell Out and Their Back, but... No, no. Those... Actually, in 
up until uh, God is Everywhere, I wasn't the full-time singer. Oh, really? I was playing lead guitars, and we had another singer, another vocalist at that time, Kiko. Oh, no. Francis. I know. Uh, so, on that record, there were two vocalists. That there is Kiko and then me. On God is Everywhere? God is Everywhere out of me. Wow. Yeah, I kind of noticed yeah. that a little bit. But what I was going to say is uh, I know... You're, you're, you, I think you've heard the changes in the vocals. So who's in the, the song, Things I Want to Do, who's doing that metal scream then? I mean, I'm not going to try to imitate that because I couldn't do it, but... Mm, I, I, <laughs> I forgot his name, but he's a good friend and classmate of our then bassist, Albert C. Uh, I believe he listened to Harry Krishna stuff, and he was in a metal band at yeah. that time, and it was really good. <laughs> Okay. He, he could re- he could really pull uh pull up some really pull up some Joy Belladonna type stuff like Joy Belladonna and drugs. Yeah, stuff. I just gotta say that it that really caught me out of left fucking field. Yeah, you could you could almost do the metal sign could, with him singing. I actually thought that was you doing that at first. <laughs> no, I could never do that. <laughs> That's why my vocal like... range is way too off to be able to pull that off. That I got is everywhere album. I know it's the well. I know United and Fight is the newest, and we'll get to that in a bit. But United and Fight, yes, yes, okay. Um, God is everywhere. The track list on it. It's actually my favorite Bad Omen record aside Black Cat. But, um, yeah. So did you write all these songs? Or who wrote the songs on it? Uh, songwriting, songwriting wise, in United and Fight, it was always uh, I would let I would let uh. John Fishbone do most of the songs, and I would I would contribute some, but because only because I wanted the band to have its own its original sound. Yeah. In God Is Everywhere album, it was a like a mixture of it was a mixture of influences. Uh, I was coming up from mostly hardcore bands before Bad Omen. Uh, I was playing mostly hardcore stuff. And melodic ones, and I believe uh, my influences in that album kind of made Bad Omen play like from eclectic, like from ska punk, hardcore, yeah, punk I rock, that. like me- melodic punk or whatever. Yeah, like the... so. We you know we unite and fight. I wanted to stay more with the three chord punk rock and roll type stuff yeah three chord one so I, I would let him I would, okay uh, let's stick with the original formula and let's do your stuff uh, forget about forget about my I would I would contribute but um, I believe uh, my influences um, makes made me write uh, songs differently from the rest of bad Omen songs and I don't want it to mess up the album but by by putting my influence in it. Just wanted to stick to the formula. Yeah, I get it. The three-chord yeah. formula. I also noticed you guys have a feature generation cover of Private Stock on there, and damn, that is... That's an explosive cover. Yeah, and God is every... Uh, yes, 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 yes. Love that one. And yeah. They've been friends with you guys uh, for a long time, so I think it's just logical to pay tribute, oh, yeah. to the, tribute to the band. I love Private Stock. In fact, I'm uh, reissuing Hype School here soon in the process of that. Uh... I wanted to ask a big question about the album God Is Everywhere, just the album itself. So, Philippines is a lot more religious than the United States because I have a dream of being. What is it like being in a punk rock band called Bad Omen in a, in a super religious country? In a super? Yeah, in a super... In, okay, the, you know how the Philippines is extremely religious, like 80-some percent Catholic? Well... Yeah? What's it like being in a... Like, Omen... The, the the term omen refers to a uh, religion and it's similar like the name bad religion. What's it like being bad in omen? A... It, like it, yeah, it, it refers to like, like bad luck. It's been uh, yeah uh, associated with evil or or like uh, cults or yeah bad luck yeah, in wondered... general. But here here in the Philippines, where most where eighty percent of the people here are Catholic, but. Um, 
I never had that struggle, I guess, with, oh, really? against uh, people who have their own beliefs. In fact, we've been the, we've been interviewed and be, we have weirdly we have been uh, appreciated by this this attraction in the Catholic Church. I, 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 I don't want to say attraction, but a group of people within the Catholic Church that appreciated our work. Whoa, that's bitching. There's an there's there's an interview somewhere. Just look for Chuck McLaren. I will. I will. And there's an there's an interview somewhere, and it's it's in the web. You could find it there, where where they find our lyrics, our messages, like um, uh, engaging, or <laughs> engaging. say uh, against uh, goes against what the the popular belief when it comes to religion in general, not Catholic per se, but religion in general. And I don't know how they came. Actually, until now, I don't know how they came up with the idea that they could somehow relate to the messages of the band. <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> I find <it> weird. <laughs> I I find it, but I, I really love those guys, and we we were we actually made a guest appearance in one of their event in the one of their gatherings, and we did some talks. Huh. Yeah, that's really interesting. It was it was a weird experience. Oh, I bet it was. Yeah, because I just I I basically told them we're not the enemy. We're just we're just like we're acting like a mirror of what is happening right now in our society. And I guess we're just super honest about about what's going on. And with punk rock, maybe unlike any other form of rock music yeah uh, we we have the freedom to say whatever we want and no holds barred we could we could curse we, we can say fuck <laughs> and we can say we can say uh, every absurd word or every curse word you can think of um, against religion per se yeah in general yeah the, and, the, the uh, one the one song on this album that really sticks out to me the most is Jesus Hates Me. I know it's got a ska, punk, ska thing to it, but that's my favorite song on the entire album right there. Jesus. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to sing along to one. it. But. <laughs> <laughs> I almost <laughs> forgot about that one. But, uh, I, I, I never did the vocals on that one. But. Oh. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's, a, oh, it's yeah. a good song. It's, yeah, because it's um, what, what, what most youngster would say when they really hit rock bottom or what people in general when they hit rock bottom yeah i mean especially in a catholic especially in a catholic country um they would like blame divine providence <laughs> uh, for their fuck ups um uh, it's the easiest way out to blame yeah, to, to blame like another Jesus, entity. Especially if you're a believer, it's easy to blame God for whatever is bad is happening to you. That's, that's, the, that's the easiest a person could do. Yeah, it's... A, and it's that's, that's what I think the song's all about. Yeah, I see it that way and also just kind of a nihilistic side of, type of song, just a reflection because... Like in my... Have you been to the U.S. before? Nope. Well, you've probably Hopefully seen. Soon. <laughs> oh yeah, I hope you yeah, hope you uh, get to check whatever's left of my country out anyway. <laughs> <laughs> U.S. Yeah. is falling apart, but like first, I, I see a lot of people compare like first world countries like mine to. I don't really call the Philippines a third world country, but I'm gonna throw Indonesia under the bus because they're not doing too well. Um, like people in like Europe and the U.S. have uh, I guess better livelihood, better higher paying jobs, and just a. Uh, uh, higher quality of life compared to somewhere like South Africa or Indonesia or you know places like that and when I think of Jesus hates me and just the lyrics of it it's just like we don't ha like you know bad religion song American Jesus yeah I don't yeah people in uh, lesser lesser qualities of yeah I cannot talk people who live a lesser quality life due to the cards they've been given and are just you know how life just slaps people around sometimes, gives you really bad cards in your hand? 
Like, Jesus hates me kind of reminds me of someone who's just like, no matter what I do, nothing keep nothing gets better. I'm homeless. I can't find a job. I have no friends. I have no family. I'm fucking dying. If I died right yeah, now, nobody right? would give a shit. And then look like, at these like, people like, over like, here. Like, like got... I said, for 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 every for every mess that you've been in, or you are currently in, it's easier to to blame yeah uh, the supreme being or God than to blame yourself for all your decisions and your actions that led you to your fuck up, right? Yeah, exactly. I think, that, I think that's basically it. And in in a in a third world country like the Philippines. Uh, where uh, every poor country, every and every poor country, you would notice that there's a high rate of uh, religion believers. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that, because that's what's happening here. Yeah? But uh, I don't know how how it connects because they believe, I guess, that when you have got no one to turn to. It, just the divine providence to probably help you but when things fall apart they're, they're, they're also the ones to blame yeah it's either jesus they helps me, jesus, loves God, me yeah. or jesus hates me i mean uh, yeah. are you um not to ask a personal question but are you religious at all or spiritual i, I was born I, I was born catholic and i have my own beliefs uh, there are some there are some things with the Catholic Church that I don't quite agree with. Yeah, understandable. So I, it's, it's just like I'm I'm a believer, but uh, I think or I figure out uh, what's good with a, with my religion, and I practice as not um, to, the, to to the best that I could. Yeah, I I get you. Um, Two, uh, two little split questions here. One, to uh, anyone who is from the U.S. who has no clue who your band is, um, have you heard... Okay, so you've been with Bad Omen since early 2000s, you said, just off and on as a singer. Um, what would you say if somebody asked you, is your name a spinoff of Bad Religion? As I have a lot of friends who have said, oh, well, are they just a Bad Religion spinoff band? Can you give me your response to that? <laughs> I'm not, and I, I'm, I've never said that myself because I've actually listened if, to your band and you don't sound like them at uh, all. If, but... if, if bad omens are like derivative of bad religion? Yeah. Is that what you're trying to yeah can you it's, respond uh, to anyone saying, oh, you're just a spin off of bad religion? Can you respond to that? Because I've heard, <laughs> no, I've heard no, that quite a bit. Probably not because, because uh, bad omen is a, is a totally different uh, what uh, monster, I guess. Uh, because... Uh, we kind of we're we're kind of resigned to the fact that our band or <laughs> most of the people here in the Philippines were influenced by musicians or bands coming up from the U.S. and the U.K. and we were influenced heavily. So if if, if you would hear some some overtones of bad religion or like yeah, I... send something. That relates to the band that, that sounded like our the, the, our music. I guess uh, it would say that it's just inherent for the band to have that sound because we've been influenced by them ever since. Oh yeah, but we're not, try, we're not trying. We're not trying to copy anybody or anything. We try, we try to make our own music the best that we could. But I guess it, it all comes out naturally. And I was gonna say on that note, um, I have I've been a Bad Religion fanboy since 1997. I have every record of theirs, including Into the Unknown, and I definitely oh, Into the Unknown here. Yeah. I love that album. It's fucking amazing. You're, you're a hardcore fan if you're you really went to yeah. I dropped big, uh, Into the Unknown. <laughs> I, dro I dropped three hundred dollars years ago on an original pressing. That's the most expensive record I own. But uh, no, I, I definitely <laughs> tell. I definitely show people. When I talk about your band to people, I kind of go into your songs a bit. There's Americans, a lot of punks around here, especially, well, not where I live, there's not many punks, but, like, there are multiple different bands with the name Bad, and like, Bad Brains, Bad Omen, Bad Religion, Bad Boys, Bad Spiders, I can name a million different bands yeah. with the name Bad, and I think that's what you, 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 have, a, you, you have a whole shelf of uh, bands coming up with 
Yeah, yeah I just wanted bad. to bring that up because <laughs> a lot of people are like, well, they're just a spinoff. No, no, they're not. And uh, and the biggest but, thing but, that... But, oh, go ahead. Go but ahead. But you get the Goldberg Battle Legion, like, what song is that? I'm really going to die. It's the Goldberg. I love that song. We're going to die for our arrogance. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> but the, and uh, kind of going back to that era, though, the Black Cat album is kind of because I have the I have three Black Cat albums. No, I think I have four. Oh, I've got, for I've, you. Thanks. I've got. A, but, but 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 let me remind you. Uh, every al every Bad Omen album has a different lineup. Oh yes, I, it's <laughs> yes. definitely. So, so, so Black album is like a, a totally different. Uh, <laughs> uh, it has a different uh, personnel. Yeah, from, uh, different from Sell Out and their band. You can definitely hear that too, 100%. Yeah. Each, each album's almost, doesn't sound like a different band, but each album definitely has its own taste to it. Black Cat's different from their back, their back's different from God yeah, Is Everywhere, yeah. it's different from Unite and Fight. And I've heard the Christmas album you guys released, uh, John Fishbone sent me the MP3s of that months ago, and damn. <laughs> you guys did a fucking yeah, and, and, and each album was uh, really good in their own right. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, it, it's how the band like uh, how each each uh, set of members interpreted the songs. That's how it is. That that's what that's how, that's what made it uh, exciting. And um, since I've uh, I've mostly interviewed other than like Mel Maniego because I know he's in the Ghost Signals and Vagabonds, and I know Adi Malanta he's in Throw As We Defy and Tweety of Chuck Koi, I know she's in a modern band. I've mostly interviewed punks from the Twisted Red Cross scene. Um, what yeah. was it? What was the Philippine punk scene like in the '90s versus today? I mean, I know we're at the end of a third decade. There's the '90s, 2000s, and 2010s, but I know how it was from talking to people in the '80s. But what was it like being a Filipino punk in the '90s and the 2000s, and even today compared to you know? Yeah, Filipino punk in the '90s. Yeah, uh, I'll be honest with you. Back in the '90s, I was in college, and I totally went a different route. Because <laughs> oh. because the school as I was into at that time, we were into, we were, uh, mind you, we were still into punk rock, but not the punk that was happening at that time locally, locally. Uh, there was a totally different stuff that was going on in here. Oh yeah, back in I've, the nineties. I've heard and, quite a few of the uh, tapes. <laughs> yeah, I was listening to a lot of different stuff back then. I was I was in, I was into Dinosaur Junior and I was into Helmet and I was I was into the whole grunge thing. Oh my God, you're my best I, friend. I, I would I, we would attend punk rock shows every now and then. But I was I was really totally into it. Uh, and I have my I have my own band back then, and we had a totally different sound. So I couldn't really talk about talk for the you know, talk for the nineties punk per se, because uh, I, I have my own take on that year. What was your band back then? Based, based on based on what I was playing at the time. Uh, what was the ba what was the band you had then? Uh, I, I was I was in Drunk Natives in the nineties, and before that I was I was playing bass for Public Syndrome, uh, punk rock band. Uh, but Drunk Natives, we went a totally different route because when we discovered uh, we we, play, we played simple punk rock at first. Then we, uh, we we tried to evolve. We, we got we got into different stuff, and we had like lots of indie rock friends <laughs> that got us into different things. And uh, yeah, we we played we played all sort of stuff, weird stuff, but not the not the three chord punk rock that we know that we know of. Yeah, are you into we tried, noise we, we rock at all? Route. What are you into noise rock like Sonic Youth? Yeah, I was into Sonic Youth, I was into Pussy Galore, Ooh, and uh, yes. Gumball. Yes! Yeah, well, I, I, I was uh, in the rock freak in the 90s. We, we had, you know, we had our own circle back then. Damn. That's and awesome. Do other. Yeah. I was, I, was a diff I was a different kid in, the, in college yeah, when we discovered that, hey, these stuff are still punk rock, but not this exploited uh, UK sub type, but they still punk rock. They're still doing it, although in a in a different form. You're into Mud Honey, you're into what uh, Afghan wigs. 
You are sort of pixies. Yeah, oh, that sort of pixies, stuff. Yes. Wow. You're the first Filipino punk I've heard to even mention those names, other than Sonic You, uh, <laughs> My buddy, you know Elec? Elec, yeah, yeah. He's my buddy. He, he's into that stuff, but most uh, Pinoy punks, I mean, I've shared a few of, of those groups in the Brave New World, but... Yeah, and it really makes me happy to hear that you're into that stuff because most of the punks I know over there either don't know of it or well haven't heard it before. Yeah, well, yeah, my my influences are really varied. It's a I'm I'm a music lover. I'm a music, I'm a music fan. I, I don't limit myself to to certain genre. Yeah, I try to discover stuff stuff that I never heard before. I, I, I was even into Portis and it's, it's still in, still logged in my car until now. Still listening to it. Still what? Still listening to it. Like to... stuff like Portis and. Oh, <laughs> okay. I didn't hear what you said there. Yeah, Arnold Morales on Facebook the other day he posted something about don't let a genre of music trap you in the same box that you were yeah, originally. That, something that, like that. That's the most powerful thing you can do. Because. I know Arnold would agree because this this actually came from him. If you if you keep yourself in the box, then what's how did punk rock help? Yeah, it did. If you if you're really if you're still locked up in a box, if punk rock freed you, then you might as well act free, right? Hell yeah, it's it's all about expression. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. In the L.A. hardcore scene, I mean, I wasn't there. I was born in 93. I'm 25 years old, but I've obviously read about it. I've been into this music for my whole life almost. Well, I started the band in 93. <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> but um, in the L.A. hardcore I actually, scene... I actually okay. have a song in my other band. Uh, it's, it's a band. I always see the band called Gut Reaction. Yeah, that, was I was going to bring them it, up, it, yes. It, it, was a, it, was, it was actually Drunk Natives, but... Drug natives back in college it was so dirt poor at the time we were no we had no means and resources of recording but we had songs. Well, so, that was the plus. But because in the nineties it's really hard to find a decent recording aside from cheap four track recordings. There was no digital recordings yet at the time. Yeah. So we we would just like record demos and that's it. Um, and then, in the 2000s, we were able to, like, make a guerrilla recording in some wealthy company's studio. <laughs> <laughs> as, 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 let's record, let's record the old songs. I, uh, I, 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 was, I managed to, to pull the old guys and record it. It was basically the songs from college. It was, those were old songs, especially in 93. I wrote it because uh, it was all about the spirit experiences I had in college. And my used... ears were like virgin to different stuff. And I was so young and naive. Do you still have uh, any copies left of that? I don't hard hard copies. Yeah. No, rather, you could probably like, like ask just ask uh, Nine Iron for that record because they're the ones who. Put it out Alrighty. of the I shall do but that. But me, I, <laughs> damn, I don't have any hard, hard copies left. Yeah, but that's the unfortunate answer that I've been getting a lot lately from fans. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I, I don't have any of my album left anymore. It's like, shit. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, 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 should, you should get that. Because, um, I found that, I told you... The that reason that is, like, those, really, those, those songs were really honest. Because it's, it's, it was written when I was really that good in music. Now, are you in Nemodav? Nem Nemodav? However you pronounce yes. that. Nemodav is an alter ego of Bad Old Man. And, and we recorded uh, out of fun. I haven't uh, heard it yet, so, but I bought it. I, I mean, I've heard a few tracks <laughs> on it, but I was okay, like, it, oh it, my it, god. It, you know, it was a fun take on power violence and grindcore. Yes. And the thing is, uh, Albert C., our bassist, was coming up with his own uh, uh, cassette-only record label called Night Iron, Night Iron Tapes. Oh, cool. So it was just it was just logical to put out some bad omen stuff in that label. 
but with this, um, he just asked us to let's do things the other way. Let's put on a record, but not the normal type, normal stuff that we play. So we just believe. Now you gotta believe this story. Uh, we just went to the studio. We had no songs. <laughs> really. We had no songs. This is gonna be crazy. And what I do is, uh, I would just give them the riff, right in the studio. Okay, I would give them the count, the beat, and then they would hit, they would hit record, and we would just play. And then uh, the hard part about that album was, uh, I played all the vo- most of the vocals in that album. So imagine grind core and power violence. I was growling and yes, doing this. I've, uh, I've heard quite a bit of this. Which I can't yeah, wait till he gets here. I, 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 I have I have this. Uh, luckily, I was able to pull it off, but I think I had my throat bleeding at towards the end of the recording. Oh shit! That's and, it, and, and it and it left me like uh, voiceless for like two weeks. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, because I, I really pulled it really hard. That's almost as brutal <laughs> no, as... But it, it, was a fun, uh, it was a fun album. Oh, fuck it, it yeah. It was a fun thing because we recorded all the instruments like live and just I, I just did the vocals after the instruments were recorded. Who came up Imagine. with the names on this track list? Full Metal <laughs> Attack, Fist Fucking in the Name of the Begotten Son, Woody Woodfucker. Who came up with these uh, <laughs> names? Uh, it, it, it was a collective idea. Uh, we threw in our uh, uh, proposed uh, proposed title based on what I sang. Mm. <laughs> okay, so if, if we're thinking about like, uh, okay, uh, do a song about Vikings. Uh, yeah. Let's think there's a three-way Viking fuck fest. Norwegian what? Vikings yeah. three-way fuck fest. <laughs> yeah, so that's about it. Oh, fuck. Uh, okay, basically... <laughs> Whatever comes to the top of our minds at the time, it's just, it, 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 it was all done in the name of fun. That yes, it. there was no politics to it. There was no thought to it. There was no no plan. No, you just recorded. You just had fun. I I think my favorite. That, that, here. That's my moment. We, we do everything for fun. I think my favorite's but, uh, gotta be Art Fag Stomped to Death by Moshing Ballerinas. That's that's a <laughs> platinum title. I, I think that that was on C. That's a, that one's that came. I think uh, Albert C came up with that one. That's <laughs> hilarious. Like, I can't wait yeah, to actually get this in the mail and review it because this is the yeah. the the sound, the artwork, which is a guy and a girl at a lake. Uh, what's, <laughs> what's the artwork supposed to be? He's got he's covered his ears. I'm looking at it on Discogs here. <laughs> It had a different uh, album cover, I guess, in, in cassette. Yeah, I, don't I, know, I, I got it in black. I don't know. Uh, and, and then there's this, like, like a painting, I guess, or of some of some girl and a guy. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Because I don't have a hard copy of it. I, 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 maybe it was given, but I lost it or I given it away, I guess. Well, I'll tell you what, since I'm moving back in a few months, since I've got a tape machine, I will make you and John and uh, the other two of your band, I will make you cassettes. Just as a gift, because yeah, this, 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 this is, when, uh, do you know a guy named Dave T- since there's his name for this? Uh, look like River He's a, he, he's kind of like me, he's married to a Filipina, but he doesn't live in the Philippines, he lives, I think, in Germany, but he actually showed me Nemo dive and he's like, oh no 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 no. <laughs> John actually, months ago, told me about this and I was half asleep and I didn't, I didn't, it didn't really hit me. And then Dave told me about it. I was like, hey yeah, John Fishbone fucking told me about that shit. He's like, listen to this shit, you're gonna love it. So I listened to it. And I was like, no, this is a fucking bad omen. He's like, yeah it is. This is bad omen. I'm like, yeah. What? Uh, I want. Personally, I, I wanted it to to be a uh, a collection for hardcore bad omen like followers. They should, well, you've they made should one like, out of me. That. 
they, they should include that in their collection, the record collection, if they wanted to complete the Bad Omen discography. The name of them should be in it, because <laughs> that's us, <laughs> actually. That's yeah. A, that's the whole Bad Omen right there. That's fucking amazing. I love that, because I, <laughs> I hope it arrives here soon. As, uh, yeah, I, I got the, I think, I don't know if I got the pink one or the green one. The guy didn't tell me, I just, he told me that it's, uh, I think it's the green one. Let me check here. Yeah, it's the green one. Which, uh, perfect, because, uh, your signature will show up on that one. Um, I wanted to go, so you, uh, have you ever played any of the songs from their back or sell out before? Live? I, yeah, we were playing, we're still playing, uh, what, uh, from that album, from their back, we play, I forget the times. <laughs> Uh, uh, stuck up, let's drink, be they stuck stuff. up. Yeah, we play, we play that one. I don't we care. Play, uh, today at school. Every time I, every time you say I love you, they're back. Pretends justice. Someday Ollie, IRA. I call it my world and Bad Omen theme tune. Call it my world. If we used, to, we used to play Call It My World, the most hardcore track. In yeah, I noticed that album is like God is everywhere. It kind of jumps around on the genre a little bit. Like you got the ska song. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know if, if it has downfall in there. I think. Or you know, the, that song is in God is everywhere. What song? Uh, downfall. It's in, I think it's God. God That's is everywhere. definitely in God is everywhere because I'm a, I'm looking <laughs> at it on this guy there. We only do uh, up until now. We still do stock up, and we have we we had John sing it all the time. <laughs> and he hates us for that. <laughs> Every time we ask him to play, uh, it would even cringe. <laughs> 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 um, can you tell me about the? I know you weren't in the band and sell out, but do you know anything about that album? I've never heard it before. Uh, I've... actually, I, I had the cassette back then, but I, but I lost it to the flood. Oh shit! And the only the only stuff that I, it still has the original member, two of them, which is Richard and uh, and John, the original drummer and John. Yeah. And they had this Ab, Ab Madera from Dear Dingo to play uh, bass and vocals. And yeah. they recorded in their, uh, and they recorded it DIY style. Like, uh, and like uh, the first one, I guess. You, you could you could ask John when it comes to the first three. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do when I interview album. him. But he's, <laughs> yeah. John is beyond busy. Oh my God. I've been trying to talk to him on the phone for about a fucking year now. <laughs> He's extremely. Mm. I, John told me the best thing to do with him is to hopefully meet him at Middle Finger Records. Yeah. <laughs> as, as I want to just hang up and just talk. <laughs> I was like, John, talk to me. I need to know about Middle Finger and the first three Bad Omen records. Um, yeah. The other Bad Omen record that I have coming in the mail, which I haven't heard it yet, but considering I know Ethnic Faces left, I don't know, left of center, Third World Chaos, Signal 3, and GI. Echoes of the Quantum. Yeah, the, the, the old covers, uh, yeah, the old covers vinyl, yes. It's so it's a good, it's a good one. Can you uh, tell me how this one came to be? Uh, John had this plan that uh, we record, we could record uh, an all covers album. And believe me, we recorded a lot of stuff. Like, I don't know if it's, if it's gone to 24 tracks. Holy <laughs> shit! Yeah, we recorded tons of cover songs. Uh, you gonna release any of them? Uh, I hope we can release the, the songs, all, all of them, because all the songs are good. You should definitely do that. I'd me. buy it. Yeah. It, it was supposed to be, right? I guess, a double album if they, he would do it in a like, 12 inch vinyl. But I don't know. It, it's his thing. He recorded it. And he he put it out on seven inch, I guess. Uh, but we we had, we had we had a lot of stuff recorded, and hopefully you get to hear it. Hopefully, those songs, the, uh, the, the other songs, will see the light of day, and so you, so you could people so you people could hear it. Yeah, I I, I would definitely love to hear those because. Uh... I mean, I haven't heard Echoes of Quantum yet, but I know Third World Chaos, Giant Idiots, I know those bands, and I 
I love your cover of Future Generation, so I'm looking forward to hearing your cover of We Are the One and The Flag. Um, I'm lo I'm uh, looking here on Discord <laughs> at your other bands. So, were you in The Beauty of Doubt? Yeah. I was, uh, I was one of the guitarists in Beauty of Doubt. I have their CD, uh, The Nothing, coming in the mail, but it looks like you were... Did you sing on that one, or did you just sing on Everything Ends? Nope, uh... In everything is I just I just did some screaming I guess <laughs> oh. I never really sang I just played guitar. Oh nice, um, Vagabonds. That's a band we need to talk about too. So yeah, I've, yeah, Vagabonds. I know about a little bit about from what Mel's told me, but I've only heard one song off the Vagabonds. Thank you, Rescue Letter, Human Barricade Four, Nowhere Bound. That's the only song I've heard. Um, uh, uh, we we have an we have an entire EP. Uploaded in Spotify. Really? You could, yeah. You, could, you huh. just search for Vagabond Suburban Serenade. I, I, I would PM you the link later, I guess. Uh, yeah, Mel sets up at about so what that, about, what about, what about, what about Vagabonds? Uh, that, that, that's, that's my baby right there. Tell me everything <laughs> about your baby. I want to know everything. <laughs> okay, uh, me, uh, as, a, as a music fan and a punk rock fan, uh, early on I was into American stuff. American punk rock stuff like Social Distortion, Bad Religion, and The Sand Inside, <coughs> especially. Uh, I would, I was really into melodic stuff early on, and for 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 the Brit bands, maybe just a couple of them, uh, Clash and Sex Pistols, and Step Little Fingers. And Step most Little of them Fingers. Are, and and most of them are also melodic right yeah very so, much so and then uh what about uh i think towards 2008 when i had this realization that american punk rock or american music in general were all country based if you listen to a bad religion, religion song uh imagine those songs being played on acoustic or on clean tone guitars, those songs were literally country music. Well, I I if, can't if you, if, declare it as full. If you but... if you'd listen to like Social Distortion, Mike Ness, he was heavily into country music and rockabilly. And early on, especially even in the early punk rock, in an early American punk rock, you have these bands called X. I love X. Heavily, yeah, X, X, Central Vega, and John Doe, right? Yeah, they were heavily country folk influenced. And even Jello Biafra, when he, when he collaborated with Mojo Nixon, they played straight up hillbilly red like country music. Okay, we need to hang out, seriously. <laughs> God. So, so I had the realization that uh, punk rock and country music uh, were like, uh brothers from different era so I, so I started uh, so I started getting into country music uh, I, st I and then I discovered most of the bands that I've been listening to have their own country country music side projects there were you have this bands called hardware music and Chuck Regan would do his own solo thing you have this gaslight anthem, and they would have this. They they have this own uh, country music going on. You have Chad Price of all, whose members came off from different punk rock, punk rock bands called Nobodies and what else? Uh, Armchair Martian. They have this band called Drag the River, and they're heavily into country music. Even face to face, Trevor Kid had his own country band playing. Countryfied punk rock songs. Damn. Imagine that you would see a plethora of uh, music, punk rock musicians playing country music. So I thought, if they could do it, why can't I? Right? <laughs> so, so, so I started in 2009 or 2010, I started playing solo acoustic shows. I released some demos. Um, solo acoustic, playing country music, uh, playing solo. Um, 
my own materials. Then I, I played some solo, solo acoustic shows. And then there's this show in QC back in 2011, I guess 2012, where I invited a fellow punk rocker and who's, who was in a, who's in a rockabilly band, uh, Johnny Tender of Kamote Chance and, and now Pusakal. I, I asked him to join me on stage for a show, for a one-off. And we rehearsed for a bit, then we played the show. And then, uh, Mali Paraguay of P.O.T. approached us and say, saying, hey, I really like your songs and hope, hopefully we could jam one time. So I was like stoked because he's a really good player. And that's all. Uh, I just invited them over. Like, oh, I really, you really want to get into it, or maybe we could jam one time. So he asked my son, AJ, to play drums, and that's it. Dragon Once was born in 2013, and then uh, we played a series of shows whenever we were invited, and I would also organize my own shows for the band. Damn. That's it. Uh, suddenly we were in a country rock band. <laughs> Playing country songs and not that uh, round those rowdy pop rock songs. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, Greg Gaffin, a better legend. He's got he's got his own little. Song. His is more folk. Yeah, though. even 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 Greg Gaffin early on he was really into. Yeah, he just released his new uh, folk album Milliport, I think last year. Yeah, I think it's two years ago. Yeah, I might have yeah. fuck. I don't know. <laughs> it's been a minute. And it, and and it's a it's 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 a straight up country folk song. Yeah, it's kind of funny, growing up in uh, Candace and then living in San Francisco, a lot of the punk rockers I knew absolutely hated country, and then they get a little older and like, oh, well, actually, so there, there's two different versions of country. Well, there's three. Folk, which, folk is the core of it, but there's new age country, which is mostly, eh, and then there's original, you know, Planet there's, country. There, there's country music like Bill Ray Cyrus, right? <laughs> which is like uh, the mainstream of, of of country. But then again, you have this Johnny Cash and yeah, I, I love Johnny Cash. Carl Perkins, I guess, and Hank Williams Jr. And of course, the Killer uh, was uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, who also plays country music. It's country. It just it, it just gets a bad nick at times because there are a lot of very generic country artists out there who have absolutely no talent who just yeah I, make I have no, I have, the music I, yeah. because it's it's technically as yeah, easy as strumming a guitar. And can you believe? And would you believe that there there's this country pop? <laughs> Ugh, there's just, a thing called country pop. That sounds really atrocious on the ears. Just the, just <laughs> saying that. Ugh. I don't think I can That's be... where Taylor Swift came from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just you. Uh, never on my. You know, Albert. I think this is the first time in my 13 years of being a YouTuber that the name Taylor Swift has been said on this <laughs> channel. <laughs> uh, yeah. I am. I'm doing a little crate digging here on the on the net as we're talking about vagabonds, and I find a band that's got your name tied to it as the guitarist and vocalist. The band's name is Communion. The album is Heresy, released in 2015. Yeah. Can you tell me about uh, Communion? I've never heard this communion, before. C communion is a like a side project, a side project. <laughs> because um, during the time when we were recording the Vagamus album, it was taking us a while. So, uh, and I have this son who's a really good drummer. And I have this friend so he really plays good. In my hometown, so yeah, it's like, come on, let's uh, let's do another band uh, that sounds different from all my other bands. Sound different from Bad Omen, and sounds different from Vagabonds. So that's basically it. Uh, so I wrote some songs while we were I wrote some songs for Communion while we were recording for Vagabonds. So it's like a side project beneath. <laughs> Another a side project. You got it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, keeping, <laughs> keeping busy over there. <laughs> yeah, I, I was so busy that that was that was. I think that's one my the peak of my creative creativity. <laughs> I guess. Uh, so the old 
the only reason why I wrote those songs, why I, why I recorded my motivation for that album, is because we were doing we were doing country music, right? And none, believe me, none of the punk rockers here would catch up on it. They had no idea what we were doing. Like, why are you playing country music? Why are you playing those boring songs? Why are you playing? I like it. Yeah, but but in my mind, uh, I had nothing to prove. I had, I played for a gazillion of hardcore bands. I played in really in a in a number of punk rock bands. Punk rock bands. So I had nothing to prove when it comes to making music. So in making country, making a country record and putting it out and making people listen to it was like a struggle for me. And uh, really, communion was like a statement uh, that when it comes to punk rock music, I got nothing to prove to anyone. Yeah, I, could, I, I, can... I, I could. I could. I could probably make punk rock songs like in a sec. In a snap, I would come up with some punk rock songs. But yeah, I'm reading the track country list. music. Ca- country music is like a, a, a totally different thing. It was a whole. It, it was a struggle to write musically. It was a struggle to record. It was, it was a struggle to make people get into it. So communion is like my statement of saying "fuck you" if you don't get what I was doing. Because in punk rock, I, I, there's not there's, there's just nothing to prove in punk rock. I've been there, done that, uh, and that's basically it. <laughs> I, I see the last track on the Heresy by Communion is called Trusty Chords, written by Hot Water Music. Who are they? Yeah. They're, they're a band from Gainesville, Florida, and in which I, uh, I was heavily influenced by that band. That's why I, I got into country music. Oh. I, I, hope you could, I, I hope you get to listen, because they have their own thing going. All right, I'll they started. Video. They they started a whole wave of that sound. The, the, most of the most of the modern punk rock that you hear right now were probably influenced by them. And one of the members, oh, two of the members for of that uh, of that band uh, had had their own uh, country music side projects. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Damn. You should, you should, you should, you should uh, get in it. Oh yeah, I'll check them out. Uh, definitely. Listen to that band. Yes. I also hope that I can find the Communion CDR because I, I literally communion just found got re- this. Communion got reaction and vagabonds. You could find them in Spotify. You could listen to all the tracks. I have a bootleg uh, cassette tape with my punk rock heroes by Gut Reaction. My punk rock heroes. Or, I think I just said the name of that wrong. Um, no, 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 no. It has a, it's a, it had a different title. Yeah, it definitely Wait, had a different check. title. Uh, it has it, 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 it had a different title. Let, 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 let me look for it. Right. Um, them. So, oh, them who walked. Them who walked. Yes. Uh, it, it was written by the guitar player, which is a good friend of mine named Benji Sangson, who happens to be the guitarist of this legendary hardcore punk band in the 80s called G.I.N.D. Yes! That was him, that was him. Yeah, and when, he, I, when he, I did he, my he review is, over yeah, that... He's the, one that recorded the, he's the one that recorded the album. Oh, really? In their, in their mega expensive studio, <laughs> which we ransacked for like a day. <laughs> <laughs> fuck them, fuck them. He's just saying fuck it to the man. In their own style. Yeah, when I did my re- my uh, review over the, um, what the f- I keep forgetting the name of the damn thing. Hold on, I, I got I got to type in gut reaction just to pull it up. It's the bootleg cassette tape that I bought from Germany. It's called Wag Nyan Gawain Tasa Bahai, a Philippine underground compilation. It's got gut reaction, anti sex system, spit in, Marcos, cronies, trick or treat. It's got. 50 fucking bands on there, and I'm not gonna list them off, but <laughs> decades worth of Philippine punk, but, yeah, that's what I found Gut Reaction, and when I posted a review of it, Ben, she's like, hey, um, Gut Reaction, me and Albert Ascona are in that, you should add him and talk to him about it. So, yeah, that's, yeah. that's from a few months ago. But, um... I, I, 
I owe I owe Benji Sainson for that out because without him we had no way of recording it <laughs> in that quality. Because he really is it's really a good record it's a really good producer. I it's like the, I need the up there with the reaction. up there with the greats. He's up there with the greats. He recorded tons of stuff from underground to mainstream. He is that good. So um, uh, were you in the? I know. Uh, did you have a band in the eighties at all? Very you little. Know, the only band closest to the eighties that that would be my first band in high school called uh, Public Syndrome. Uh, Public Syndrome. But uh, but but I'm with them in like nineteen like ninety. Uh. And you played the first show together, and it was like it was um uh, what? It was um, it was my entry point to all this. Yeah, you mentioned that them earlier. Did you uh did you ever get to attend any of the Brave New World shows or any of the Twisted Red Cross no, but shows? I was I was too young at the time. Oh. <laughs> oh. I, I, was I don't young. know how old you are, so I'm just wondering. Uh I am forty three now, turning forty four. Yeah, and you, you when been... Brave New World was happening I was only I was wearing shorts in school. <laughs> <laughs> That's how young I was. Yeah, I hope I can want to talk to Tama Tanchenko, which the reason I was driving back to that is because I wanted to talk about a couple more songs here on the Unite and Fight. So, the first Bad Omen song that I ever heard was The Slums of Recto Avenue, because... Yeah. Which, I know this is probably more of a thing to talk to John about since he owns Middle Finger, but... Um, I found... I, when I first moved to the Philippines in May of 2018, because I lived there for a year, I, um was trying to find the Philippine punk rock stuff and I found a blog spot that talked about a middle finger records and Albert let me just say and I, I guarantee you John's gonna laugh his ass off of this it took me and my wife seven hours seven hours yeah. to get to find middle finger so I it was I went there on the day to redo my to renew my visa my wife and I left uh, Cavite at 7 in the morning, arrived in, at the Bureau of Immigration at 9. I got my visa at 9 a.m. We went to a tricycle and said, hey, can you take us to Middle Finger Records at Recto Manila? He's like, what's that? I'm like, um, can you... <laughs> That's how underground it is. Yeah, and this this is just going to get better. You're going to laugh here. Like, okay, can you take us to the Cardamar Shopping Center? Uh, Joe, sorry, I don't, th I don't understand. Fuck, can you take me to Recto Manila? <laughs> He's like, yes, I can take you to Recto Manila. So he took us to Recto Manila and dropped us off somewhere. Don't know where the fuck he dropped us off to this day. But I had to ask a shitload of people. I, I had only one picture of Middle Finger Records. One picture of it on my wife's phone because I was at the blog spot. And finally, after about <laughs> 90 million security officers later and just told a bunch of people, I finally found the tricyclist dropped us off in the totally wrong area. I yeah it, it it was a, it was a monstrous thing but we spent <laughs> almost it, like, it, it's actually a scary place to be in if you're a tourist or oh you. yeah I <laughs> I learned so much in one day I learned where to buy if I ever needed a bootleg uh what is it a, a fake ID or a f they yeah was a lot of shit down there. every illegal stuff you yeah. can find in there. A black market of fraudulent documents in Recto Manila. I was like, oh my god, is this, is this, I asked my wife, I'm like, yeah, should yeah, we yeah. fucking be here? The thing with Recto, I, I, thing with Recto is I love that place. And that, that, that's, even as a kid, that's where you get our stuff, if you want yeah, to. Yeah, I was told that's the reason the middle finger's there, because Recto's where the punks used to hang out. It, it, it's like, it's like the mecca of punk rock. But, but back be, before, before internet, that's where you go if you want to know what's new or what's happening that's the place you go and it's scary it's got a lot of for shit a kid there and i think I if even... you want if you want to buy shirt or you want to buy bootleg records or you want to get the new dead candies or the sandwich record it's probably yeah. there you can find it there um that's how it is when did middle finger open originally do you know i lost track oh, <laughs> i'll ask john i lost track but uh, you, you could you could ask uh john i, I, have, I have this this uh, this timeline in my mind, but I can't really tell. You know, it might not be accurate. But long story short, um, it took us literally about six hours. That is no exaggeration at all. 
we finally... <laughs> this is the sad part that I'm about to tell you. The actual building that Middle Finger is in took two and a half hours to actually find it because we kept going in circles. We we literally passed it three times. But it's, yeah, cause, it's just... Cause uh, there, there's basically no way to pinpoint the exact location because no it's address. inside of a building, right? And it got to the point where I told my wife, I'm like, I don't even fucking think this place exists anymore. And then right as we were about to give up, she's like, hey, look, Nocturnal Mall. I was like, oh my god, there it is! <laughs> and then we had like less than 15 minutes to look around and thankfully the lady was nice to me because she's like, oh, Joe, we're closing. I'm like, what? I just spent six hours trying to find this place. I'm like, I will buy three records if you let me look around for 30 minutes. She's like, okay, hurry, please. So I, I bought my wife a couple shirts and I got some records. I got uh, Urban Bandits Independence Day, GI Fascinated World of Garbage, and IOV. Or no, I got that from you later, Noise. I got uh, Phil Vio at large. I bought three records. Yeah, just... but, but, uh, but props to you for finding that place on your own because the, 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 probably the easier way to get into that place was uh, yeah, yeah, uh, find somebody to know. Yeah. I didn't know anyone just to take, know you take it to the place. This was a yeah. my first um my two my two first Philippine punk rock friends. Do you know uh, Pagan Fire? Yeah, Metal uh, Metal Man. And then Noel Padre Juan, he's my buddy, and also uh, do you know Noel Punk Shed Mutilated Noise? Mutilated, yeah, uh, Mutilated Noise uh, actually helped uh, in the what making the cover or uh, no no no. Uh, in releasing or distributing the first No Fucking Morals out. Oh, really? My first band, my, my, my first hardcore band after Drunk Natives in college. Damn, nice. Yeah, Noah's a buddy yeah. and uh, he, uh, he he's the first Philippine punker I know and I know him and then I met uh, June Ortega and uh, but before I knew any of them, like I just had a blog spot and that's kind of when I went from and then I joined after I after I found middle finger the girl there told me to join a brave new world group which is what I'm a moderator of now which at that time I had no clue what she was fucking talking about but pretty much through Ninoy through Noel through Juno Ortega through Ace Man Arnold Morales obviously as he, <laughs> he goes yeah. by I found John Fishbone and then it just kind of went from there but um <laughs> yeah, I feel kind of stupid too, cause like from the Bureau of Immigration, Middle Finger is in it's less than thirty minutes away, and it took me six hours to find <laughs> yes. it. That's, the, that's what it I was like right at. there. It was just around the corner, cause pretty the much immigration is just near the port area, right? Sintamuros. Pretty fucking much, and I to this day I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's crazy. <laughs> like I've, I've been I lived in Japan for a few months in 2016, where everything is stacked up. And I accidentally found three mm -hmm. record stores, Rock, uh, Rock Steady, no, Rockstar Records, and a couple other ones. And they were there's they're, the buildings aren't marked. You have to literally, it's like you ask someone, how do you get to Rockstar Records? Oh, you go down the street, you take a left, you go up the stairs, you take another right. It's, too <laughs> it's like oh my god, that's too complicated. You have to find places Fuck. like that. There's middle finger in the heads. age of. In the age of putting pins on Google Map, <laughs> it's really hard to find places like that. I, I don't know if you could find Middle Finger Records. I don't know if somebody had the, the, the was smart enough to put a pin on that place so like tourists could really find it. I made a video called Google Journey Map. to Middle Finger Records where I pretty much showed in the video getting there, which was a pain. Oh place. really? I should, I should, I should look into. And there, there is a lot of complaining in that video too. <laughs> like, we were, we were so close to just saying Definitely. fuck it and giving up because I, I was like, well, I didn't, the blog was written in, I think, 2008 or 2007, so it was written a long time ago, and so I'm sitting there yeah. like, is this place even open anymore? Like, I can't find it. Is it dead? Is yeah, no right. One, no one had touched there's, the blog in 10 no years. There's no way of knowing if the place even existed. But yeah, we found it, uh, and I'm glad, and I can't wait to go back there and film another video, and hopefully John's there so I can interview him. <laughs> But um, yeah, that's why yeah, I wanted to bring out the slums of Recto Manila, because I love paying homage and just going to Recto, although it kind of scares the shit out of me because I have the shit that I see go on there. Yeah. But... <laughs> you could find every sh shady-ass motherfucker in there. And if you want that's an why I love that place. And if you want an STD and, and you're an ugly bastard, <laughs> go for it. Those are, I, 
pretty sure I've seen prostitutes there. Pretty sure I've seen them there. Lots of them. Lots of I mean, lots of thieves, lots of prostitutes, yeah. lots of degenerates, lots of liars or people who are making who are who are, uh, who are there to rip you off. Everything is there. Uh oh. And again. You there, bud? Shit happened again. Hello. Yeah, I was saying, if you, if you could survive a place like Recto, you could probably survive anywhere. Hell yes. <laughs> Just a couple more songs to talk about, okay, since we've been doing this for an hour. Uh, the song Manila Belongs to Me, I know it's by Cox Power. I love what you guys did with that, Manila Belongs to Me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, it, it was, it, it was a, a tribute to the band, because that, the bad omen sound really owes much to what Cox, Cox Power was doing. And uh, we, we wanted to take our own spin on it and we would like to, we, we, we wanted to to make some, to make it appear, uh, or to make it appealing to the Filipino crowd by mentioning like the Pasig River instead of yeah. their own river, right? Yeah, so that's, like... that's just about it. We, we, we wanted somebody you know, that people could identify with. That's why we came up with that one. Yeah, I um, I have the cassette tape version of Unite and Fight, and uh, I just really like how this album is more, I guess, want to say serious and uh, I mean, it's got some, it's got its its light-hearted nature to it, but it's it's a more serious, uh, for, ready for revolution yeah. type of album. Yeah, for me, for, for me, that album was more cohesive when it comes to like songs, as opposed to Guns Everywhere, which like. Uh, um, a mash of different influences. The United Fight, it, 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 we had a conscious effort to, okay, let's make a punk rock and roll album, and that's it. That's how it came to be. And then on the cassette, the last song on there is Spam, previously unreleased, a country ish song with a harmonica? No, it's not Spam, it's. it's so that uh, that song, that country song in that album, it's. it's, it's it's called it's all right jet and oh. it's a homage to a fallen friend it's a it's an old to a fallen friend named jeb bautista who used to play bass for the trade um oh, really? yeah and and uh, he left he left us at the age of 43 due oh. to heart attack oh i'm sorry to hear that yeah and uh i owe i owe him most of my more matured wisdom when it comes to playing music and appreciating music because he has really influenced me in in more ways than one that's why i really own him musically he's a visionary he used to manage or he used to help out with Peter scott oh really he Peter scott. yes yes J yeah. Jebo Tista. you could you could ask you could probably ask uh ace man arnold, arnold moranis about uh Jeb Bautista. We, we, we were in a band together, would you believe, in 2006, when we played Ari Morales, me, and Jebo uh, We played the second incarnation of Music Front, where oh. I played guitar and Ari Morales. Yeah, played. he told me you were in a Music Front with him. I was going to ask you about that, yeah. too. I was in a Godzilla band back then. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I, was, I was playing different bands because I wanted to like push the boundaries. What was it like uh, playing in Music Front? Playing with music front is like being in the mafia. <laughs> yeah, because it, it it was fun because they're like the big boys, and it was like the youngest in the group, right? <laughs> and ima imagine you have this band, you have the you have a vocalist from Urban Bandits, you have you have a drummer from Deceased, you have the bassist from The Trade, and then and then there was me. I, I, I was like the kid brother, right? And every time we play a show, uh, people would come up to us and it, 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 beer would just flow over, and I would not, uh, and I would not spend a single dime. It was like being in a gangster, like the big boys, the big boys in the scene. People just coming over and bring us beer, bring us food, Jesus. and and just being entertained all the time. It was a fun time to be in. 
Do you? Uh... And I was, I, I was all. I, I, I'm deeply honored to be in that band because that band, Music Front, uh, was the missing link between Urban Bandits and Putriska. Yeah. Yeah. So I, just to, to, to be able to play in that band was like a big honor for me. Do you uh do you have any music by Music Front? Cause uh, I've been waiting for Arnold to get me some, but he's having some you technical could, difficulties. There are there are there are some videos over at YouTube where, where we played uh, some songs live. Oh really? Just just type in you just search for like Music Front and Arnold Morales and my name. You could, you could probably see some videos. You know I gotta say some good, some, some good ones. Yeah. I got I gotta say real quickly. This is, uh, we've covered more bands in this interview than I originally thought we were going to. <laughs> You've been all over the place. And I see here yeah. that you were also in Throw. Yeah, uh, I did two albums in Throw. It's, uh, Unwavering and Believe. I have both of I played, those. Uh, I played Reading Guitars. Yeah. Damn. It, it, it was also a trick, because it's hard. The most hardcore band that you can get into. We played fast, and I was able to inject my melodic side in that band for those two albums. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm a little blown away by this. See, not but oh, were you you didn't play in the stand? Oh, un okay, no, unwavering no, no, no. in the and believe, yeah, believe in unwavering. Saying the second one and the third one. Yeah, I've got both of those on CD, and I, I also, also stand on CD. Yeah, and and in Believe, I got to play one song on the last track. That was me singing. On six, that's on yeah. six. Nice. Yeah, yeah. What was it? What was it like to play in a band without in Atlanta? It was hard. It was fun, and but but it was hard because Alta Atlanta is a uh, first and foremost, he was my. Growing up, uh, I really looked up to him as. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, 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 really, I really want to play. Uh, imagine if you're a teenage, teenage boy, teenage kid, and you were getting into punk rock. Then I get to hear Alde Malanta in Dead and, and I thought, I want to be that guy. I wanted to play guitar and sing as well. So. That, that that was the aim as a teenager, and then to be able to play alongside with I don't know it's like uh, <laughs> really terrifying because uh, you have to meet a lot of expectations. Yes, for for me, huh? For me, um, that's a, that that is a, a lot of sh a, a big shoot to feel, um, but it was fun. Yeah, I love Alex. It, like it, it was it was fun. I, w I was able to prove myself over and over again. If I could play, really play, really fast and hard, and the discipline that that band instilled on me was like really enormous. Yeah, Throw was one of the. I I, I when the twenty first century. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, because because we cause back then we rehearsed like. Uh, Relig religiously, like military type rehearsal, <laughs> <laughs> that like, like we just really get into it seriously. No, no flying around, no yeah, messing around. Just get things done. Right, record. Right, rehearse, record. That that's what we did. Then play live. Yeah, Thor definitely has a very <laughs> bold, just <clears throat> type of yeah. feel to it. I mean. I mean, that's the like the reincarnation of Dead Ends. There, that's it's pretty fucking huge. So, is there yeah. any other band that we haven't talked about that you've been associated with? Because I, <laughs> I uh, so we talked about we, we talked about Bit of Doubt, uh, No Fucking Was, Tommy Syndrome, Got Your Action, Bad Omen, obviously, uh, Communion, Vagabonds, uh, and of course, <laughs> Bad Omen. I guess we're we pretty covered <laughs> most of it. Yeah, I've uh, I've got like four different bl blog spots pulled up right now, and I think I've, unless there's like a hidden link somewhere, I think I've covered everything, even every, even things that I didn't even expect to cover, such as communion. Um, got any shows? <laughs> got any? Uh, uh, John told me about an album you guys are working on. 
Yeah, he's, he's always working on some stuff. Uh, I think he has his hands full on producing albums right oh, now. Man, uh, is there a new Bad Omen album in the making? Yeah, we're doing. We're making songs. Right, we're writing songs right now. We're in the process of writing songs, and we plan to record. Uh, when do you think we actually have, have two? We already we already recorded Pinas Lang recently, which came up. Yeah, I, I heard that one on YouTube. On a on a compilation, uh, on a video finger compilation, coming up this year, and we just wrote. Uh, we just finished writing two more songs for an upcoming album. Hopefully, it will release next year. Yeah, if John. We, uh, if we would if we if we would not procrastinate and get <laughs> things done by early this year. Damn. Yeah, I, I kind of blew John's mind when I showed him my Bad Omen collection because he thought I just had Black Cat, which I don't have this CD of Goddess everywhere, but I want to get it eventually. But my God, and technically I've got Black Cat, they're back. Uh, God is everywhere. Unite and fight. Nimble Dab. Echoes of Quantum. He's like, holy shit. Like, you, you've been busy. It's like, yeah, I just yeah, I've been busy, but um, yes, I guess so. No, I said I he, still have no idea. I still have no idea up to this point. I was able to pull it off. How I managed to to squeeze in my time doing all that up until now. I would sit in the couch watching TV and. And just think now, how well, how did I do that? I have no idea. <laughs> how I came up with that energy to do those things. I actually have no idea. You're like the Iggy I'm, Pop of the Philippines. Because, because with me, I, I don't, I don't actually turn back. I, I, I don't look back. I just, I just, I just move forward. Just do things. I just do things. Just do things and move on. So well, that's what I do. Whatever you do, you do a fucking amazing job at it. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank yeah, you. That, 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 that's just what I do. I get bored and I write, I write stuff, I play, then do it, then leave, and on to the next thing. That, that's me. So, do you have any other than the Bad Omen album? Do you have anything else in the works right now? No, I'm I'm, I'm taking it slow. Right now, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I think I've done enough damage. <laughs> <laughs> Not fucking damage. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think I'm out of questions. <laughs> so that is, that is that doesn't happen too often. I I guess I will see it. Is, um, <laughs> is Bad Omen gonna play this winter? Uh, As in November, we have a show coming January. up. Uh, the, the November. Oh no, uh, I have no idea for for the upcoming months, but. This August we're, we're slated to play in Batangas. Uh, it's all the story tomorrow. That's the only show we got this month. Oh. Yeah. I hope you guys play in November, December, January because uh, I need I need to see. We, we will. We will. We will definitely. That's, that's like. We're, 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 we're always playing. We just. I'm gonna. We never the time. I know John's gonna watch this, so it's gonna spoil it. But I'm gonna show up to you and John. With a fucking <laughs> bag of cassette CDs and records for you guys to sign. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, he's he's probably gonna watch this, so he's gonna say, "Okay, I'm gonna be prepared," because I've got screams from the <laughs> underground. I've got a, I've got a few VA comps with Battle. Anything that's associated with Middle Finger and Battle, but I'm gonna have him and you sign. Yeah, I, you should lock him in the room and just let him sign <laughs> all your stuff. <laughs> John, he's the one that said it, not me. <laughs> oh my God. But um, I, th yeah. I think that's it. I'm uh, I'm officially out of uh, questions. Now. Okay, and I got, and, and really, uh, thank you for having me on your show. And well, of course, it's I hope uh, I hope um, the show uh, would really go on and uh, and more to, to have more people to interview, you know, especially in the Philippines. Yeah, I'm I'm t I'm trying. I guess I can say this. Yeah, I'm a. Uh, Arnold Morales is the one who pretty much ignited the views. So there's a little story for you just to make this an hour and thirty minutes, because you know, I'm a, I'm all even numbers <laughs> here. And we got an, what what? And we got an R? Huh? I think it's not that, that, that. I think you had them for thirty minutes and you had me for an R. I think that's not fair. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> what happened was, and this blew my fucking mind. It blew a lot of people's mind when I tell them the story. 
the Arnold Morales interview, well, the original version of it's over an hour and a half, but a lot of it was cut because he said things that probably she doesn't want on tape, but, um, he was quite loud <laughs> about when I, when I talked about Duterte and, you know, this Marcos and shit, he was loud in Starbucks in Manila, in, the, in Robinson's, like, he was talking about the drug war and things that I was previously told, you can't talk about that stuff, but I was like, I just asked him, so what's your opinion of the drug war? And it was like a nuclear bomb going off, and almost everyone in Starbucks was looking. I was like, Arnold, hey, um, they're, they're, they're looking at us. Oh, my God. <laughs> he's like, no, he's okay. I fucked it today. And blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. What would I start? But how I got that to go on, because it's interesting. Yeah, I met, it, 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 it was bordering on dangerous already. I met, <laughs> I met June Ortega on Facebook, and I was trying to get a hold of Arnold. Because I really wanted to meet him and at least just talk to him. And so I, he's like, I couldn't find anyone named Arnold Morales. Because he goes by Aceman Sanchez. And uh, June's like, hey, type in Aceman Sanchez. So I did that. I added him. I sent him a message. And I didn't expect him to reply to me. Because I was like, eh, he isn't, he isn't going to reply to me. He doesn't even know me. Like, the next day I wake up. It's like, hey, how you, hey man, uh, thanks. I, I like your record. Uh, or, oh, I told him I like his Independence Day. I got it on vinyl. And uh, he's like, thank you for the support. I appreciate it, mate. I was like, okay, I'm going to take a shot in the dark. I'm like, hey, Arnold, I leave the Philippines in two weeks. Um, <laughs> it, you live in Manila. Could I, like, meet up with you and have you sign my record? I expected him to just not even pay attention to it. Cause I, I didn't yeah. know him. Cause you see, to me, he was this legendary Filipino punk rocker. I'm like, there's no way he's going to pay attention to some random American kid who lives in the Philippines. There's no way. <laughs> I wake up the next morning to, yeah, meet me in Robinson's, uh, in Starbucks and Robinson's on uh, Tuesday around, uh, like, 8 p.m. I'm like, what, 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 what? Oh my, f okay, okay. <laughs> so, you were yeah. probably stoked to hear that, right? He fucking met up with me in Starbucks. I handed him my Urban Bandits Independence Day vinyl, my Fatal Response on my Puerto Rico, and I just turned my camera on, and that happened. And I'm sitting there like, I am talking to Arnold Morales. Oh my god. This, yeah. this guy's from fucking college, the Urban Bandits, Puerto Rico, Tsunami Tsunami, which I didn't know about that band at the time. But, wow. I, that's kind of what started it. Because after him, you know, I've, I mean, I haven't interviewed the, uh, George Imbissole and the G Giant Idiots yet. I'm going to do that when I get to the Philippines because that's going to be... Yeah, you should. You should, you should, that's you should, be... You should interview the, the, the other guys. Yeah, June, June and I are going to actually meet up and do an on-camera interview, but I did Arnold and then Mel Maniego of Private Stock. I got his interview, Fred Dator, Ricky Arallo of Private Stock, Al Demolanta, Tweedy of Choco Koi, which I'm going to interview her band this weekend. Nanoye Padron and then a yeah. Pagan Fire, that's coming up. You... Arnold started this. Arnold is the one, the interview that started this Bless shit. him. <laughs> Bless then, him because of him, uh, there'd be documented interviews or, you know. Yeah, because he's... Pinoy, Pinoy scene, right? I didn't even really think about interviewing anyone until I just met him and it happened. I'm like, well, fuck, I got this guy. I might as well just see what else I can do. And I started reviewing the first Philippine punk album I reviewed, which I know it's not punk. It's a Putre Ska the 95 cassette I reviewed that and then that took off I was like okay then I re reviewed GI Fascinated World of Garbage and that's pretty much mm -hmm. what happened just started reviewing everything until the point I'm at now where I've got a stack of about 30 CDs from the Philippines and about 40 records and it's just piling up because people keep sending me stuff yeah that's good I love Brave good for you. World, my power, my power the show <laughs> and uh I still am struggling. Have you ever met Tommy Tanchenko? Yeah, I, I, I actually interviewed him <gasps> once for for a magazine. I'm sorry that was so high pitched. I just squealed. I did. I did. A, I did a whole uh, a series of interviews for with uh, oh my god with new world personalities back in 2007. I guess. Yeah, I did a piece. I've got a third world chaos new move forever reissue sitting next to me, looking straight at me. Um, do you think there's any way you could get me in contact with Tommy? Because I, I messaged him on Facebook, he doesn't respond. I know, uh, right now the best, uh, the best, uh, person that could link you up with, hook you up with Tommy is probably John. Yeah, he probably, he, he probably, uh, wouldn't remember me by then, because it's been a long time. 
yeah, John told me when I get there, he's gonna try to personally take me to Tommy. He's like, make sure you get yeah. your camcorder ready. <laughs> I'm nervous to review to, to interview Tommy because I have so much to ask him, and I guarantee you, I'm not gonna get an hour and thirty minutes with him. I'm just gonna say, <laughs> can you tell me how Twisted Red Cross started and Third World Cast started? What was your? Oh my God, it's it's gonna be an explosive no, yeah, interview. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because 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 my interview with him was like really meaty. Really what? Yeah, really meaty. It, 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 it had lots of substance and lots of really nice oh, stories. Meaty. He all he always had the nice stories. Cause when it, it comes to putting up TRC, you wouldn't believe the stories that he would tell. But I would I would just let you do your thing. But I have my own. <laughs> I have my own interview with him. Yeah, yeah. But I just, I have so much to ask that man, and the only stuff that I know about him is from what, like, what you've told me, John's told me, be it Miguel, Arnold, people have told me a lot about him, so I have enough to probably give a documentary on the guy, but I want to talk to him and be like, dude, what started it? Yeah, the, part, the, the guy that started it, oh, actually, that's him. You just you should ask John for that person. Could, yeah, he, he told me that when I get to the Philippines, he'll help me with that because he told me that. Yeah, you should, you should, you should. Yeah, John told me that getting a hold of Tommy over Facebook is not the easiest thing in the world to do, and that yeah, it's easier. It's, to it's, get probably, it's probably an elusive person over at Facebook. Well, he doesn't really. Yeah, Tommy busy. gets messaged by Philippine punks all the time, and because you know he was the founder of the scene, and he's like, eh, I'm. I don't really want to deal with this. It's too much. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was a question that I wanted to ask you at the end of this here. I've asked everyone involved with this project this. Rescue Letter and Human Barricade for the Fourth Order. Um, I know that's a rather controversial CD, but you're in Vagabonds, which is on that CD. Uh, can you um, yeah. give me your take on that CD? Uh, a couple of friends asked us to, to contribute, and... Just contribute. That's it. If, if if any friend would ask us for a song to contribute, we could probably do it for free. That's just about it. Oh. All right. uh, I have, uh, the controversy surrounding that compilation. I really have no issue about it because uh, legit or not, uh, it doesn't matter. I love it. I've I've got a I've got a sealed cause, copy cause of it. Because because for me, any friend that would ask me for a some contribution for a particular project, I'd be glad to do it. That's punk. Yeah, I yeah. Bet. I've asked them, well, I, I've asked, of all the people I've interviewed, I've asked those involved with that project, like, towards the end of the interview, about that CD, because I found out about it a few, about a month and a half ago, which I own a copy of it, thanks to Elek, shout out to him again, and, um, yeah. just doing research on it, I've seen, for some reason, a bunch of spite against it and I, I don't understand it's a it's a damn good yeah, yeah. cd yeah uh, it's music i guess it's music, yeah, it's music and uh, it's, i honestly wish at this point we were at twisted red cross 30 or something but i, I really wish there, 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 there's, a, there's a lot of scene politics happening around here that i wouldn't want to get involved in yeah i understand uh, and, and and for me uh, i just i just Try to get along with people. Yeah. <laughs> Be friends with everyone. And, uh, in peace. Uh, yeah. Uh, I really don't mind if the album was a legit one or not. But um, I'm just happy that we had an outlet to get yeah. that song out. The Vagabonds cut in that particular compilation because. There's no way that we're doing a uh, a full length anytime soon, so it's just hanging in there. So might as well let somebody else handle it to, yeah. to have the people hear it. And thanks to that CD, I've heard Nowhere Bound, so I've heard at least one song. <laughs> yeah. yeah, make sure after we're done with this that you send me a link so I can listen to the rest of your music, because I definitely got to hear it. Yeah, I'll send you the gazillion links <laughs> where you can hear my stuff it's yes I, I need to like hear it. it all and uh especially if you have any communion because i have never even heard of them before until now yeah sure 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 all right well i think Let's that's that. i think that's all for this word an hour and 30 minutes i really appreciate you getting on here talking <laughs> to me 
Yeah, okay, and I got thanks for having me on your show and more power uh, to the show. And yeah. Yep. Have a good night. Thank mate. you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.